Welcome back. This morning on Today of Food, we are introducing you to Chef Laura Lee. Yeah, Laura Lee runs a successful catering business in London. It's called Kiwi and Rue, where she has mm. she served a lot of high-profile guests, including, get this, the royal family. Mm. Well, guess what? She's also got a cookbook out, Coconut and Sambal, of recipes from my Indonesian kitchen. And this morning, she's going to share two recipes from it that we can make and enjoy for the Lunar New Year. Good morning, Yeah, Laura. Chef Lara Lee, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. What a dream come true to be on the Today Show. Oh, oh, speaking of um, dreams, you actually catered for the royal family. Can you just Hello. tell us a little bit about that? Well, it was Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And um, you can hear I've got an Australian accent. I do live in London. But I made them an Aussie morning tea. So they wanted lamingtons. They wanted sausage rolls. They mm. wanted Anzac biscuits. So full Aussie fare, and they loved it. So it was super fun. Are they yeah. big eaters? Are they both big eaters? <laughs> well, you know what? It was at an event. So what they wanted to do, because they get so kind of inundated with people wanting to speak to them, that we kind of create a little like special plate for them that they can go behind a partition and eat when no one's watching, oh, which I understand. Smart. You know, it's hard to eat in front of people, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Lori, what's the significance of the, the Lunar New Year for folks who might not be familiar with it? Why is it so important? Sure. So, I mean, you know, a quarter of the world's population celebrate Lunar New Year, and typically it's from people of East and Southeast Asian uh, background, but really anyone can celebrate it. So I'll give you a few tips of how to get involved. But essentially it's bringing in the new uh, New Year uh, that is based on the traditional Chinese calendar. So this coming year is the Year of the Ox. But essentially what it's about is it's about togetherness, it's family coming together, it's abundance, and it's a lot of eating. Thank pretty much overeating. And Let's eat. Speaking of eating, what are you making for us first, Laura? Well, so I'm uh, half Chinese Indonesian and half Australian. So today is an Indonesian Lunar New Year mm. menu. And I've got um, a prawn and chicken fried noodle dish. Now, mm. the noodles are important because the long strands represent long life and longevity. And oh. who doesn't want that right? And the other dish I'm going to be showing you is spring rolls. In Indonesia, we call this lumpia, but the spring rolls represent gold mm. bars, which helps bring in wealth for the new year. So that's another kind of lucky kind of uh, tradition that lots of people like to, to eat to kind of bring in that wealth and good luck and fortune. Yeah. Is it difficult we get to make? Guys? Yeah, real yeah. quick, because oh. we only have about a minute and a half left. Can you just show us the, the, sure. the main points? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So I've got my pan on uh, hot heat. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some garlic. This is a super easy recipe, by the way, to, uh, to cook up. So it's not just for Lunar New Year. It's also for any time of the, day, you know, the week. Could be a Tuesday night when you're tired. Super easy to whip up. I've just added in some snow peas. And um, I'm just want those vegetables to soften real quick. Now I'm going to push all those vegetables to the side. So I'm going to add some scrambled egg, which I'm just going to add to Ooh, one half of the nice. pan. Good breakfast. Yeah, and we're going to let that egg kind of set and become a little bit of an omelet because the omelet also becomes like an egg roll, which also looks like a gold bar. Mm. Again, bringing wealth into your noodles, so that's what you want. We're going to stir that together. We're going to add our long life, longevity noodles mm. into the pan. Already I've cooked. Pre cooked those, so it's super easy. Then I've got some pre cooked prawns. I've got some pre cooked chicken thighs. Mm -hmm. You can use any protein tofu, beef, shrimp, whatever you want. Chuck those in. And then this is the part that, looks that makes amazing. it Look at that, guys. Oh, wow. yeah, Laura, we, unfortunately, we got to run, but thank you so much. We appreciate it. Want to make sure yeah, people check sure. out the cookbook, today.com slash shop. And you can check out her recipes at, at today.com slash mm, shop. Thank, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Thank you, Chef. We are back with Today Food. We are not only here in South Korea for the Olympics, we also just love tasting the culture, and we really mean taste the culture. It's a very important holiday today, the Lunar New Year. We have chef and restaurateur Judy Ju with us to show us how to celebrate with a traditional dish. And we should point out that these wonderful athletes from Team USA are right here with yes. us. Too. We're going to enjoy some broadcast. Right. Judy, what are we going to make today? Today we're going to make 
a super traditional New Year's soup that you have to absolutely eat every single Lunar New Year. And it's called dakuk. And it's called dakuk because it's made with duck. And this is the it's Korean, with, oh. duck. It's Korean ah. rice cakes. Oh. Mm. And these look like coins. So it's yeah. very symbolic. And so the coins obviously represent wealth and prosperity okay. in every sense for health and your soul and everything. And also they're white. So it also represents purity. And to start the new year very clean and, and in a fresh new, new way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're basically just starting out with a beef stock. Okay. And you can use chicken stock or vegetarian stock, wh wh whatever you want to do. Yeah, just, just put them in. Okay. And that's going to come. It's nice and warm, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're also going to add some dumplings. You don't have to, mm. but dumplings are also very symbolic. They represent parcels or purses. Also, again, about wealth. Yeah. Okay. And they're also uh, delicious. Also, uh -huh. also delicious, too. exactly. And then if you want to, you can put any kind of meat. So here we've got some oxtail, super mm. traditional also. Okay. We'll put that in. And you would sort of eat this on what we would consider New Year's Day? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And you have to eat it. You, you can't really celebrate New Year's okay. with, 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 with without it in any way. Okay. And also an egg. Egg, mm -hmm. to crack that in there and that kind of adds some creaminess to the soup all right which is great and give it a stir and it's kind of like an egg drop soup so that egg will kind of blend in there Lovely. and make it really nice make some nice ribbons and then also there's all about the garnish too so you always have to have color Korean cooking is all about the five colors the five textures and the five flavors and with the garnish we have some egg omelet Yum. just roll up and you kind of slice thinly okay just like this it's kind of hard to chop in this cold weather. <laughs> I know, like my fingers are freezing. <laughs> exactly. And then this is what it looks like it's in the beautiful. end. And so that looks good really one. great. Thank it's you. Yep. Yes. And you're going to put um, oh, thanks, some Al. spring onions or scallions on top, mm -hmm. some chopped seaweed, okay, and some sesame seeds. Oh, that one you can garnish What's this, Judy, over here? That is, um, these are all the traditional rice cakes oh, yeah. that you have. A little bit of chopped seaweed on oh, yours. Thank there you. you go. Thank you. And there you go. Let me have these wow. two. Do you guys want to try a this little? Is this your uh, first? Anyone uh, want to try? Hot soup. Hot. Huh? We have an athlete who's hungry. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. Mm. And so these are it's the delicious rice cakes also. Whoa. So we have rice cakes good? in every form, every color. Are those everything. sweet? They look like sweet. Some of these are sweet. They have red bean inside, That's some really different good. types of uh, seeds inside. It's quite everything. flavorful. You it's like free, it? Yeah, I do. Well, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, year. Year. you so much. You can get all these recipes. Check out today.com slash food. We are back in a moment, but first, this is Today on NBC. Yummy. Uh-huh. Delicious. That was awesome. Is that sweet? We are here on our Olympic Plaza this morning. We are cooking some authentic Chinese cuisine. And here to show us how to make a Beijing-style hot pot is Lucas Sin, the chef of Nice Day and Junzo Restaurants and Kitchens. Lucas, good to see good you. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, good to see you Thank again. Thank you for having me again. So tell us oh, about the hot pot. This is something that's Ooh. great. <laughs> that would be perfect for a Super Bowl because people can yes. all get together. Yeah. It is perfect. It together. It's perfect for the Super Bowl. It's perfect for Chinese New Year. It's perfect for whenever you have a gathering. And you okay. don't want to do too much cooking, mm -hmm. but you want to impress your friends. Let's do it. Okay. So, so we're going to start. This is this, with the uh, sauce? this is the sauce. So, well, the thing with hot pot is that you're cooking very sort of beautiful ingredients like this beef right here in a not super flavorful broth. Okay. So the broth is herbal, but it doesn't have a lot of salt in it. So you want to have a really robust dipping sauce. So the base of this dipping sauce, sort of a Beijing Mongolian style, is sesame paste. Now, it's important to get real, proper sesame paste. Where do you get that? This you can get at the Chinese supermarket. And the good thing about Chinese sesame paste, instead of tahini, is that you can see the color. It's a little bit more toasty and brown. Like, mm. smells like peanut butter. Yeah. Okay. You know? So oh, the other things yeah. that are going to go into this, we need a little bit of chopped scallion okay. for that fresh herb flavor, as well as the cilantro for that flavor. Mm -hmm. And then these are the funky things. Funky these things. are the optional things, okay? Okay. So this here, furu. Fermented tofu paste. Oh, where do you this, get that? This is also in a Chinese supermarket. Okay. There are different kinds. You want to get the red one. Okay. This isn't, doesn't sound like the most fun thing, yeah. but I think of this as like Chinese cheese. No, we okay. trust so you. Okay. Umami, yeah. So that's going to go in. Look at things, no matter where you live, you have the good old internet. So you yep. can always order things. <laughs> you need a little bit of sesame oil to yep. thin okay. out that um, sesame paste. You need a little bit of soy sauce for sodium. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is also a funky thing. This is chive paste. So chive you garlic chives, so uh -huh. green garlic chives, you yeah. chop them up, salt them, let them sit a little while. Okay. And that's going to give it a little extra layer of like herb herbaceous mm -hmm. funkiness. And, and is this spicy, like spicy? That looks. Like this is a chili oil we make at Junza. Okay. Okay. Um, this is called our black label chili oil. Mm. It's not too, too, too spicy. But just enough. But just enough. You just you want a little bit of together? Bring that all together. Okay. 
Now, the great thing is when you go to a barbecue or a hot pot restaurant, uh -huh. or when you're doing hot pot at home, everybody has your little bowl. You build your own sauce. Right. Once you get to know the ingredients, oh, some you kind of know what you like. like. Yeah, yeah. Make it your oh, own. I like it hot, you like it sweet. Okay. 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 So, right. so we're going to bring this together. Okay. okay. Here's the beef. Beef. Now talk to me about this. Now, oh, this is a beautiful so kind of beef called cacanha, or top sirloin, or top sirloin camp. It's a very lean piece of beef, as you can tell. When you get it proper, you can get a nice thick fat cap on the top, mm -hmm. but we took that off, and we're just gonna slice this as thin as we can. Carefully. Yeah, with no. The sharpest Sharp knife. knife. Don't judge me, it, can I go it, to a butcher? Does it help to make it, maybe leave it in the freezer for a little yes. bit, so that it's easier you, to cut? You know what you're talking See, about. See, he knows his you stuff. Know. <laughs> I, we just left it out here, because it's freezing. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. I mean, look at that. Place. I and, feel like you could chop your finger yeah. off. And, I mean, it, a nice sharp knife is really important. Also, cold fingers. That way, if you cut yourself, you, you don't feel really it. feel it. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> okay. It's like, oh, okay. So that? we're just slicing like this a little bit on an angle. Uh -huh. You can use any kind of beef you like, and we have some others over here. Okay. But now is the time to eat. Okay. So, mm. here is our broth. Um, we made this broth in a pressure cooker. It took about this 45 minutes, but it could be like three hours or so. Ooh. And once you smell it, I mean... Ooh. Uh, so what's in there? So this is what some oh, people in Beijing call a Mongolian-style hot pot, which is pretty authentic to Beijing, okay. specifically, uh, as opposed to other parts of China. You have goji berries, you have dates. Um, this oh. is just beef bone, and it's, because it's pressure cooked, it's basically sort of like a clear consomme soup. I mean, you can see the dried shrimp in if there. If you don't have a pressure cooker, could you, what could you do? You could put this on the stove for, you know, three, four hours, uh -huh. sort of low temperature, and you're building this herbaceous, slightly salted, slightly sweetened broth. Okay. Yeah. Now, the fact of the matter is that this is where all the flavor is going to come from. Okay. So you want to add some of your Napa cabbage uh -huh. that is going to help sweeten the broth. Mm -hmm. Add some of these daikon, um, which is also nice and gently sweet. If you can't get regular daikon, daikon radish is actually great. Radish, radish okay. is great. Potato is great. Sweet potato, whatever is in season, eggplant even, or taro, or any sort of root vegetable. This is a little bit of rice vermicelli mm -hmm. and tofu. So the great thing about tofu is in Beijing, there's this technique called dong uh, tofu, which is freezing tofu. When you freeze tofu, you give it a more sort of porous texture, so it absorbs all the flavors. Oh, of it. Like a sponge? Yeah, so just a couple of pieces of tofu. And here, we're, okay. we're, we're almost a little out of, out of time. time. Here yeah. because, so how do we finish this? So the best way to cook this is to grab a nice thin slice of beef, uh -huh. and you're going to just dip it inside of the liquid, and it's going to cook in a matter of seconds. Oh, this is this so in a matter of nice. seconds, because I was yeah. sitting here thinking, now, how are you going to do that? You oh put that God. all together in your individual Bowl with in your individual sauce. bowl with the sauce. Oh, so the it. sauce is in the bottom. Ah, yeah. there you go. Oh, wow. That's going to be amazing. Right. Well, we're going to continue to uh, ladle this out. Uh, yeah. But in the meantime, head to today.com slash food for more of Lucas's recipes.